Good morning. It is uh, Tuesday morning and we are in Stonehaven Bay. It suffers unfortunately from wind gusts so there are two two little mountains. So every now and then there's like a pretty you know you're getting gusts at about I don't know, high 30s comes one and just knocking the boat a little bit and if you look at the clouds you can see them all screaming past and that's just because the boat is just being knocked. But for us pretty pleasant. Um, thing about being in a catamaran is we're only really you know, we get the yaw, but we don't get the roll, which is pretty nice for us. Today we're having a breakfast, Teresa's just finishing off breakfast, and then we're gonna head off round to Nauru Point. Now there are some, there's some really good, Nara Inlet apparently. <laughs> yeah. There are some pretty good indigenous rock paintings. Is that where we're gonna go and see? That's right. Yeah, phew, got that one right. <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty gusty here and the wind's only getting stronger. We are gonna have to find a pretty protected anchorage for probably the next 72 hours. But it's pretty protected here. We have the, the lee of the land to protect us from the, the worst of the wind. I can smell bacon. Yes, your bacon is coming. Come on in here, Where's, where is it? There you go, you get two bacons. This one, I, di I didn't cook the top of the egg. I'm not quite sure how I feel about that yet, but you're just gonna have to deal with it. Deal with it. Oh, we are up at DYA, DYA. Good morning, everyone. So every morning they have this thing called SKEDS. I think it's short for scheduled radio call thing. I didn't, did you know that this was a thing? I didn't realize it was a thing. We've never chartered a boat before. Well, we have, but not like this. So every morning and every afternoon, the charter companies call up all the charter boats and basically ask them for like an update. Like, where are you? What are you doing? What's happening? Just to keep an eye on them, I guess, <laughs> probably fair enough. And actually I thought it would be really annoying, but it's actually quite nice because you get to hear what everyone's plans are and you get to kind of hear the operators give them advice about where to go and what to do. At, at the moment, the weather is, I mean, it's beautiful and sunny, but there's really high winds at the moment. There's a strong wind warning tomorrow, and there's also really high winds this morning. 37 knots um, recorded this morning. So yeah, it's just good to know kind of, because we're not familiar with this area, it's just really good to hear where they recommend going and where's, just getting that kind of little bit of insider knowledge, I guess. And it's just interesting hearing everyone's plans as well. So I thought I'd be annoyed by it, but actually I really enjoy it. Kind of reminds me of the um, radio nets in like the Bahamas, where everyone in the morning kind of has a little chit chat. That's a good show, man. Yeah, Grenada. that's right. It's good. It's our turn in a minute. We've got so easterly winds 20 to 25 knots, seas one and a half to two meters. East to north easterly 12 below one meter. Partly cloudy day 50. Nick and I sometimes have a different approach to cruising. He loves settling into a new location, exploring locally and really taking his time to get to know a new place. I, on the other hand, I'm always excited to move on and discover somewhere new. The feeling of raising anchor and pointing our bow, or in this case our bows, towards the next special location always fills me with a happy anticipation. Are we off? Okay. Come on, bed. Chasing power is over. They've got to be still uh, fully around the, the northeast corner to be headed back. Come on, come on. This is pirate, but pirate is over. Pirate, uh, very good morning to you as well. I hope you've had a pleasant evening and morning so far. And what are your plans for today, Ever? Cumberland, we've just left uh, Stonehaven um, Anchorage and we are heading around to Nauru Inlet. Nauru. We should, Nauru Inlet. We should be there in 60 minutes. Over. Yep, that's our intended location. We'll anchor um, out of the wind and uh, stay there until this weather passes through. Over. Okay, 
Okay, guys, um, that's great. We'll let you go and enjoy the rest of the day there. And we'll catch you um, either on this channel or eight one this afternoon. Over. So we are not going to be getting the sales out today. The kind of policy of the charter company is anything over 25 knots, they ask that you don't sail. And while we would love to be able to kind of <laughs> test the limits of this boat, um, it's not our boat and we don't want to do anything and then obviously for it all to go horribly wrong. We also don't have an anemometer, so we can't actually tell the current wind speed. Um, but, you know, the gusts are at least 25 knots, if not higher. We heard on the radio this morning that Hamilton Island, which is just around the corner, is recording um, up to 37 knots in the gusts. So I think that is definitely kind of bare poles territory. Um, certainly all the other catamarans that I can see out don't have sails up. So I think that uh, we'll just stick to motoring today. We're just heading around the corner anyway, and we'll save the sailing for a day where um, we can enjoy it. And this helm is really comfortable. Yeah. I guess it's the little things that you don't notice. Like, for me, there's enough padding in this back, that when we go over a wave, it's not, you know, it, it doesn't, I don't find it tiring. No, no it's very comfortable. Yeah, it's a, but it is a comfortable, it is comfortable. Lovely face full of salt water just now. <laughs> the camera is like covered in salt water. I'm gonna have to kind of give it a once over with um, some fresh water later when we get in. Yeah, it's pretty, uh, pretty choppy. Just like every now and again, you go over like a few kind of bigger waves and the boat kind of slams a little and you get this like spray of salt water over the bows and yeah, into my face. Brisk day on the water. I'm not gonna lie, when I booked a charter in the Whit Sundays in Queensland, I assumed we'd have some nice, mild, tropical weather. What I didn't realize is that these strong southeasterlies are actually very common this time of year. Sometimes when it's grey, wet and windy, the sailing itself becomes more a matter of simply moving the boat from A to B rather than an opportunity to enjoy being on the water. However, that's the reality of liverpool cruising. It's actually not always fun. I got it over there. Is that it? I think so. Don't run the boat aground in this bullshit. You right? Yeah. That's pretty sketchy. That was pretty sketchy. And even if this wasn't our boat, I wouldn't have been comfortable with doing that, like, unless we had to. But I guess the thing is that, you know, this is an inlet. We're running now at nine and a half knots, yeah. which means that we've got three or four knots of incoming tide that's coming in here. So you're basically being swept onto a reef at about three to four knots. Yeah, that was pretty sketchy. Like that was way beyond what I was comfortable with. But this should all settle now, the reef should give us relief. Arriving into Nara Inlet and getting some protection from the wind and swell was a relief. But it would seem that we had one more obstacle to overcome before we could settle into our new anchorage. Such fuck! Ha! Oh god, what happened? That just broke. We don't have a windlass. That I can fix. Now I need to get this sorted out. I need to raise the anchor a little bit. Pull it up a little bit so it's slack and then we'll attach some line okay, to well, it. Okay, well, I want you to... use this. Now, I want you to motor forward very slowly onto this, very slowly, for 10 seconds until you hear me yell. Right. That's 40 meters. Yeah. So okay. how much depth have we got? Six. We've got more than enough. That's eight times scope. Right. That's too much. Better too much than not enough, babe. We've got lots of wind and we're still pretty close to that minor hole. Okay. Well listen, I need to get the snubber on. Okay, well you're gonna have to reverse the boat. I'm 
get the anchor up, the gypsy's slipping, I can't, the manual f***ing windlass release is broken, so I need to try and get everything fixed. Your job is to not hit anything. Yeah, well, yeah? that's right. So did we not get the anchor up at all? No, the anchor's still half down. Oh, because our counter's wrong there, because our counter says that it's up. Yeah, sometimes when things aren't going well, filming takes a back seat. Let's pick up again a few minutes later once we actually got ourselves safely anchored. What happened there? You just came off the gypsy? She slipped the gypsy. I don't mind things slipping the gypsy because what happens is you end up with a big pile up of chain yeah. underneath and it snags. Yeah. What I'm furious about is this. Yeah. This is just shocking. Yeah. And I'll tell you for why it's shocking because this is a lever. You have to use it as a lever and it's just got a bolt running through it and yeah. a piece of stainless steel tube. So when you try to lever it, it slips. Look, this. Yeah. So it pops through this if you try and use it as a lever. But the only thing it's there for is to use as a lever yeah. in case of emergency. Honestly, I am furious. This is just poor maintenance. And honestly, someone's gonna end up losing their boat over this because the gypsy will slip. You're not gonna be out of, you literally, what happens is you slip off the gypsy, you ended up in a situation like we ended up where you can't, you can't, you can't use the windlass. Yeah. You, to, to, you know, you're in a strong wind. You're trying to get, you've got to get some purchase. Of, you can't raise it or lower it in yeah. that case. So you, and the only thing you can do is like a manual, a manual drop and this breaks. an action-filled half an hour. We are nicely protected now though. We're in Nara Inlet and uh, there is some swell coming into the anchorage and we're kind of, the wind is kind of funneling down the, the inlet. So there is still some breeze coming in and a little bit of swell, but it is really comfortable. It's, it's much more comfortable than outside, definitely. I can see why this place is gonna prove pretty popular tonight. Already it's filling up. There's quite a few boats coming in and it's not even lunchtime yet. I've already seen a couple of anchoring difficulties, shall we say. So I don't think we're the only ones who are struggling. There's a boat right in front of us who are struggling at the moment. And I just really hope they don't drag into us because they're like literally 50 meters away. So hopefully they know what they're doing. This afternoon, we are going to go and explore the um, indigenous artwork that's here. There's like a little walk up to a site of indigenous art. So we're gonna go and check that out and learn something about the history of the Whitsunday Islands, which I think is gonna be pretty exciting. Time to go ashore. For the first time in a few days. My name is Carol Pryor. I'm a descendant of the Naro people of the Whitsunday Islands and I would like to talk about my spiritual connection to Nara Inlet and what the paintings here in the cave mean. Those paintings are spiritual connection with all Naro people. The paintings that are there are signs from our ancestors and that keeps our spiritual connection to those that have gone before. That artwork and everything around there, including the rocks, special places, everything that is on that island has a spiritual connection, has a meaning for all Nauru people. The stories about different animals have been handed down from generation to generation. And our creation comes from above and it come, came into the water. And that's a part of our dreaming. So when you look out onto the beautiful blue waters and the pearly white sands, just remember and visualize the figures and the footprints of a proud and happy race of Aboriginal people.
We are Aboriginal people. We lived off the land. We lived off the sea, and in particular the sea. My grandfather was a seafaring man. It's in everybody's blood to go out and fish and hunt and gather off the sea. weather systems normally just pass through but there's another high coming in and two highs squeeze normally get high wind. Well look I think that's exactly what's happening at the moment that's yeah. why we're getting this high wind. Caught between two highs. All right everyone thank you for watching. It's been great. Yeah I hope you're enjoying these episodes from the Wit Sundays let us know and uh, we'll see you next week with a brand new episode. Cheers. Cheers.